through the videos that we've had on this channel, I've talked with you uh, significantly about some of the primary ingredients of narcissism, high control, low empathy, a need for superiority, an attitude of entitlement, uh, a manipulative and exploitive way of dealing with people. What I'm wanting to do is I want to add to your understanding of narcissism, and I want to see if we can pick up on certain red flags that might be just a part of their natural behavioral repertoire that goes beyond just those basics. And as I talk with you about these, uh, these red flags, and I have 10 of them here, I'm wanting you to uh, learn how to discern what's right and appropriate for you in relationships because I, I know many of you have said, well, you know, I've been exposed to narcissists and it did not work out well and I don't want to have to go back where I have to redo that all over again. So let's see if we can pick up on some primary, very common red flags that a narcissist may throw at you that will tell you perhaps this is not uh, the relationship that you need to give a lot of attention to. Uh, for example, uh, red flag number one, narcissists tend to be easily critical. Now, you know, each one of us can uh, be critical from time to time. We may say something like, well, I didn't really like that, or that didn't meet my expectations. And so, you know, sometimes uh, we, that inner critic shows up. But narcissists, it shows up a whole lot. They can complain easily. They talk about what's wrong with somebody or what's wrong with an event or how this didn't measure up or they thought they were all that, but no, they weren't. You know, then they just uh, say and uh, say those kind of things so frequently. It's like, man, I don't think anything's going to please you. And with a narcissist, typically that it doesn't because they have to be superior, which means they like finding things that illustrate to them that people and events are inferior to them. Or a second red flag they tend not to delve very deeply into your emotions. For example, let's suppose that you're talking about, uh, about an event. Let's say you visited some uh, friends or family, and then you say to that person, I really enjoyed my time there, and it was, it was quite a rewarding experience for me. Now, the average healthy person is going to say, I could kind of tell that was a good one. Tell me more about that, and, and uh, how is it that that uh, fit into your needs, or what's the history with that? And so they want to ask penetrating questions so they can get to know you on a more full basis. The narcissist, nah, I don't care what makes you feel the way you feel. And so uh, if you talk about what makes you feel warm or good, they may say something like, oh, that's nice, but they don't really show a lot of interest in you because... You're not them. Uh, they think about one person's needs most, and, well, that's themselves. Or a third uh, red flag that a narcissist may toss out at you, and that is they tend to hijack conversations. Let's suppose that you're discussing an event or you're talking about some plans. The narcissist may say, yeah, that reminds me of a time when I did something like that, and they'll just go on and on about their experience, and it's like <laughs> you got left behind in the dust. And you're thinking, well, I was about to explain to you what my experience was. And then you realize they don't really care. They have one favorite topic that they like to talk about. And wouldn't you know it's themselves and their experiences? Or a, a fourth red flag. And that is they lack reflective thinking. Now, narcissists can be intellectual. They can have all sorts of ideas about what's good and bad and what's right and wrong, and they may be able to explain concepts and ideas real well, but that's not what I'm talking about when I talk about reflective thinking. You know, for example, if you're in a boardroom and you're talking about some plans, you hope that it's, it's tied to a sense of missionality. If you're in a relationship, and you're trying to discuss who we are and where we're going. You hope that it's tied to some uh, feeling of meaning and purpose. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about reflective thinking. Narcissists is like, nah, that's too much trouble. All you need to do is look at me and I'll tell you what to do. And when you want to go deeper and deeper into the meaning, into the roots of things, they get bored with that rather quickly, unless they're the ones that get to call all the shots and then they can talk forever about that. Or how about a fifth? red flag. And that is, uh, they can excuse any and every mistake that has ever happened in their life. 
If there's been a failure, it was somebody else's fault. Let's suppose they're talking about a relationship that uh, didn't go well. Then they're going to talk about how moody the other person was or how they had all sorts of expectations or they just uh, uh, didn't live up to their, to their promises, something like that. If it's a sporting event and their team lost, it's because the refs did it. If it's a business venture, if it's an organization and something uh, didn't go well, then um, somebody else is at fault for that. They don't like saying, I blew it, or I made mistakes, or uh, this is something that brought out one of the negatives in me. They, they can't do that because that's vulnerability, and that means that they're away from that superior position, and that scares the daylights out of them. Or how about this one? And this is number six, and that is uh, they, they have a lot of expectations for you and people in general. You'll hear narcissists, and, and listen carefully on this, You'll hear them use words like must and have to, had better, got to, should, supposed to. Uh, those are favorite words that they like to use because it's their way of saying, well, there's a, a, a way, that, an agenda that life is supposed to unfold and it happens to coincide with the way I think. And so they insist that things have to do things, uh, have to play out according to their agenda. And as a result, they're not very nuanced. You know, sometimes you can have opinions about how things ought to be, and that's fine. But there can always be an exception to the rule, or there can always be something that comes along that's like, oh, hadn't thought about that, or uh, that's just a different set of circumstances. I think we need to move beyond hard black and white and sometimes get to know the person or the circumstance more fully before we move forward. Narcissists can't do that. Red flag number seven, and this is a very common one, and that is conflicts are not managed successfully. If you get into a conflict with a narcissist, then as far as they're concerned, it, it's a contest. Who's correct and who's incorrect, and you can pretty much guess where you're going to be in that equation. And so they can come off in a very overwhelming kind of way and shaming and blaming and harshness and a caustic style of communication. If that doesn't really seem to get what they want, then they can go into uh, the passive, uh, aggressive kind of pass uh, way of uh, managing conflict where they can shut down. They just won't give you the time of day. They won't return calls, things like that. But it's their way of saying, if you're in conflict with me, you're the loser, and I'm going to make sure that everybody knows about that. And so there's no spirit of teamwork. Healthy people say, well, if we're in conflict, let's each hear from one another. And let's uh, you know give one another a chance to share their needs and thoughts and feelings. The narcissist uh, thinks, there's only one person you need to hear from. It's me. Or an eighth red flag. And that is, they can ex exaggerate their own positives, but then they'll minimize their own negatives. You know, when you hear about something, uh, hear something good about them, uh, let's say they uh, did well in high school, uh, and they're 48 years old, it's like, well, let me tell you about the time I scored that touchdown. Or, uh, yeah, we, uh, or maybe in their adult years, well, we had this big sale and I closed the biggest sale in company history. Or uh, their kids are doing well. Well, they're not doing well. They're the best kids in the class. And so they, they greatly exaggerate all the stuff that's good, but then they don't like to talk about the, the things that didn't go too well, like the time I didn't get that sale or the time that, you know, thin, things didn't go well with me earlier in my life. Uh, they only want to talk about themselves in an upbeat kind of way. And so as a result, you don't get a real sense of intimacy. Now, they don't mind learning the, the negatives about you because that just gives them power over you, but they're not going to let you know their own negatives. Well, uh, this uh, uh, takes us to another one, and that is uh, another red flag, and that is they can be very impressed with external signs of success. Uh, for example, they, they like uh, being in a bigger house or having the better car or wearing the finer clothing or being around the people that really matter the most. Uh, they want to have the, the external bling and the sign of success and being attached to the folks that seem to be uh, in the decision-making kind of position. And uh, it, it's very important for them to have the externals. Just being an average kind of person or a regular individual or someone who's kind of plain or unassuming, that's not very appealing to them. Um, and finally, why don't we say uh, another red flag is there's a there's a general sense of closed-mindedness. 
Uh, they don't like hearing from other individuals. Impatience comes easily. Uh, and when I say impatience, it's because they don't want to slow down long enough to hear somebody else's thoughts and feelings and needs. It's like, look, if the world could just think like me, then we'd all be better off. And so they, they've just kind of got this sense that says, I don't want to be bothered by listening to someone else's thoughts and, and interpretations. Just do what I tell you to do. So as you are uh, becoming increasingly aware of these red flags, I'm hoping that you'd be willing to ask yourself a few questions as you think about whether you should move forward with this person or not. And one of the questions is, am I being asked to be loyal to someone who doesn't want to reciprocate loyalty toward me? Or another question, do I sense that this person uh, ultimately is going to have a, a low opinion of me, particularly when my humanity shows up? And if all that's, if that's going to be an ongoing thing, it's, it's going to be very unpleasant for you. Another question, and that is, is this someone that I could be safe with when difficulties arise? In any kind of relationship, personal, business, or elsewhere, there's going to be some difficulty. Is this somebody that can handle things in a very good way? And then another question, and that is, do I get the feeling that there are certain things that this person just doesn't want me to know about them? You know, there's an old saying that says a relationship is only as healthy as its secrets allow you to be. And a person that just doesn't reveal themselves very fully and they don't really let you know the, uh, the totality of themselves is not likely to be somebody that's going to be uh, in a good, uh, good for a relationship. So I'm, I'm hoping that as you learn how to read these red flags, you can tie them back to some of those primary characteristics of narcissism that we talked about, the control and low empathy. And these are some of the external signals uh, that you can watch for. Now, there is one person that uh, doesn't really have a lot of red flags. This is my buddy Gus. And uh, Gus just likes to be a regular dog. He's, he's down here in my lap asleep. And so um, I, I, I kind of put him to sleep when I start talking. Uh, maybe I have that effect on you too. I hope not. In fact, I would invite you to go beneath the video and hit the subscribe button. We're going to have more uh, uh, videos that come up. And also beneath there, we have some links to some of my books and some online workshops that you might avail yourself to. Just know that I'm hoping that we can create uh, an atmosphere here on this channel that says, let's do relationships right and let's manage our lives with goodness and dignity. And that's when we know that we're survivors of uh, other people who might want to throw their narcissistic bent toward us. Uh, we can do better than that. And so I'm hoping that uh, you're going to join us in that effort. Now, to that end, I will see you next time. And Gus will too. He'll be back. See ya.